I'm originally from North Dakota, where we started the Grand Forks Wallbangers, and we're the first rugby team in the United States. A murder ball team back then. I'm a Canadian boy, so I did it that way. I went head first in the boards playing hockey. Yeah, I was in the rehab center, met a couple guys, uh, played wheelchair rugby, and they took me out to a practice, and I was hooked right away. Went to rehab, obviously, and did everything with that, and tried to get, figure out what life in a wheelchair would be, and then I go, man, I still have this competitive fire in my belly, and I, and I, I want to be active, so, and looked up a local team um, up in Minnesota, and went to practice and was hooked. I was introduced to it back in rehab in the mid-90s and instantly fell in love with the sport. I mean, how do you not fall in love with it when all you do is go bash people as hard as you can? I'm thinking it was like 1978 that we started and a group from Winnipeg came down for the sole purpose of showing off this new game they had. We all fell in love with it. We all went home and started teams and that's where it began. Yeah, it's insane to think about how they played and what they played with and you know they're bringing these everyday chairs to the court and literally like your chair would break during games and you couldn't play anymore like spokes go flying. And Back in the day when we used to play someone would go over and it looked like an absolute yard sale. A guy would go over and he'd fall out of his chair and quarters and change would be rolling all over the court. His wallet would be all, all over the place. And, and no wheelie bars. Imagine that, playing with no wheelie bars. That's unbelievable. I can barely sit in this thing and reach behind for the remote control, let alone play rugby. Back when I first started playing, everyone's like, hey, you need to find a, a nice pair of boots to wear. I'm like, boots? What the hell do I need boots for? And they're like, well, use the boots to stick it in someone's wheel and that's how you pick them. And it, the funny thing is my first pick I ever picked someone, I stuck it in the wheel, then my foot went all the way up and around the wheel. They had stuff falling off and uh, their chairs took a licking. Uh, obviously it wasn't the speed and the, the, the pounding that it is now, but uh, these, these everyday chairs are not meant for contact. I've talked to guys that, are, that have been around the sport for its existence and they go, you know, we were just playing just like I'm playing now, but I think it's important to appreciate where the sport's been um, and where it can get to. It's very competitive now. Back in the day, there was a whole lot of sports, but there was a whole lot of drinking, partying on the side, and a lot of camaraderie. And now it's, there's a lot at stake, and players are playing at a high level, and everyone wants to you know, be part of Team USA or win a national championship within the USQRA. Our London team, 80% uh, of the tournaments that we go in is in the USQRA because that's where the competition is. So even though we play in uh, some tournaments up in Canada, uh, we, we come down to the States to, to bang with the best. Yeah, the USQRA has been super um, important as far as the wheelchair rugby community goes from an, a national level to an international level. It's cool to see, and wheelchair rugby is now, fans show up, they want to see the sport. It's the number one sport in the Paralympics. And you know, 40 to 45 teams a year compete but at the same time, that's 40 to 45 different cities that the USQRA is affecting by having teams. It's pretty cool to know that it's all around the country, 45 teams wide. And worldwide, there's pretty much every country now has a wheelchair rugby team that's competing at a high level, at a Paralympic level, and, and it's, it's, it's high stakes rugby, it's high stakes sports. The murder ball movie kind of glamorized the sport, didn't it? It kind of made it cool. And, well, it was cool, but it finally got the recognition that these are a bunch of badasses who are really putting themselves out there. And Murder Ball 2. Ooh, that'd be good. Murder Ball 2. It's, uh, there's always drama in wheelchair rugby. Well, you gotta have Riley Bad in there. Who can, who can top that character? It's a good question. I would get rid of the old cast completely, except for me. But you gotta have Chuck Ioki in there because he keeps America in the game. Alex Babone, because he likes to talk and he's super loud. And well, I mean, you got, I mean, you got Gumby coaching uh, Team USA right now, so you want to talk characters. So and and maybe maybe for Murder Ball Two, you just leave Canada out of there and you just go to Australia. So maybe we do that. I mean, you got some funny funny dudes out there. It's way more than just a sport. It's the male camaraderie. It's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a sense of normalcy for athletes. And 
hanging out with teams and you, you start to discover mentors that can help you in life. And, and not just wheelchair rugby, but just in everyday activities. And so it's, it's done a lot, not just for me, but for a lot of people.